Welcome to Luxon Photography, my name is Janis Dirksen and today I have a camera lens review for you. And we are going to talk about and we're going to take a look at the Canon EFS 10 to 80 millimeter SDM IS super wide angle zoom lens. A long name, so let's just dive right in. Now usually I photograph with the Canon full frame cameras, the Canon 5D, the Canon 60, the Canon 60 Mark II and I use prime lenses usually the very fast ones, f1.4, f1.2. And so how does this little lens get into the row of camera equipment? So let's now take a look at some of the images that you can take with this lens. The key or the focus of this review is not a technical one. I, I don't want to talk too much about the technical specs of this lens because in most reviews, you get that. You got that covered. What I want is for you to see what kind of images can you get with this lens. So I want to show you a lot of images. It's going to be a real world review, not about the specs, not about images of the lens, but many images that I took with the lens. So you see what you can get with it, how the images look like. Okay. So first of all, the question is why? Why do you buy a super wide angle APS-C camera lens? For me, it was about being able to film me while I photograph someone else, so to film photo shoots for this YouTube channel. You will find over a thousand videos on this channel and most of them I filmed with this Canon 550D, the Canon T2i, very old camera. It's like the Canon 7D, but cheaper and not as great. Just to give you an idea how old, this camera is really old and it doesn't really work and it, it still works, but it, the autofocus doesn't work no matter which lens I use and it's all, it's, it all falls apart, but I still use it. And on that, I always have the 10 to 18 millimeter lens, mostly to film myself like this. So when I'm photographing somebody on the streets, for example, and I do it for free, then I film myself like this. If I don't film it, the people can buy the images later. But if I film it like this, um, I do it for free. And that's what I needed this lens for, to film me on a photo shoot. That's my why. Another reason to buy this is just to find out, just to try super wide, wide angle uh, photography. So you know all the landscape shots that you see on the internet or maybe on uh, with your Amazon Prime stick on with the when nothing is on then you see the beautiful images of landscape and some of these images are taken with a wide angle or super wide angle lens. So I think there's a point in photography in your photography journey where you think about hmm how how do images look like with the super wide angle lens? If I had one, how would these images look like? So let's dive right into the stories and the images. It's important for me to show you what you can get with it, what I got with it, so you can see, do I like these images? Is that something that I would like to capture? If yes, then this lens is for you. So to begin with, I usually shoot Canon full frame cameras and prime lenses. And I never go out with this camera, with this lens in a photo shoot, but I often have it with me to film me. And usually after the big shoot is over, I take some shots with this one. So in the first story, we go to Hamburg. My goal was to photograph 101 people on the streets that I never met before, that I don't know, they don't know me. I talk to them on the streets, say hi, and then we make a photo shoot right there. And I photographed 101 people on one weekend and then on the last day on Sunday when I had 110 people, I just walked around town with this film camera and just took some pictures of the scenery of the buildings. Hamburg is developing itself all the time. It's always under construction. It's always new buildings. There are whole districts that are built up over five to 10 years and beautiful landscape scenery, cityscapes, and the 10 to 80 millimeter wide angle or super wide angle lens is a great tool to capture these beautiful buildings to get all of the building in the frame, not just a part of it, 
as I would with my full frame equipment because I don't have a super wide angle lens for that. So here you see now the images I took after the 101 shootings in Hamburg with my, I would call it film camera equipment. And I'm really happy. Now, I never use the camera and lens to photograph, uh, but when I do, I always like the results. And I feel that the results are way better than I always expect when I take this camera up. Because it's an old camera, the lens is great, uh, but the camera I use is not the best. All the other cameras I have are way better, so I very rarely use this one. Okay, these are the images in Hamburg. Now let's go to the next scene. Now, I live in Bremen, which is 100 kilometers away from Hamburg, and we do workshops here. And one workshop is Bremen at night. So here I have some shots that I show you that I took with this old camera, Canon T2i or 550D, and the 10 to 80 millimeter lens. I get the, the buildings all in the frame, even when I'm not so far away. And I had the camera on a tripod. Now with f4.5, with the image stabilizer at 10 millimeters, you can hand hold it even at night. But you have to put the ISO a little bit up. And with this old camera, I, I said, you know, let me shoot at ISO 200, F 7.1, two seconds of a shutter speed, 10 millimeters on a tripod. Boom, this is what we got. Great image quality. We got the building all in the frame, beautiful black and white, even at night. And I wanted to show you just some black and white images from the night shoot so you can use this but sometimes you should use a tripod for this kind of photography okay next scene um, as i said i like to have this camera with me and when i take pictures it's often after the big shooting now the next scene we were in tuscany in italy near florence and i was a wedding photographer at the wedding so I took some images with this camera lens, just of the scenery. It was, it was one hour from Florence away in the middle of nowhere. It was just beautiful landscape and then this mansion with the pool and all the small houses around it. Very beautiful. I think they make wine tours. If you want to taste wine, this is the area where you want to go to. And um, so here are the images from the wedding. I did way before it started or some images after it but I did not use this on the wedding it was it's not the gear that I use but now looking at the image I, I think I could have used it and then after the wedding I spent some more days in Florence and I chose a hotel on a hill um, actually I was on the wedding I knew I had three more days in Italy and I had no hotel booked so on, still on the wedding the day after, when everybody was going home, I was wondering, what, what, am, what am I going to do? And with my phone, with the last battery that I had, I found a hotel, and that was the Art Hotel on the hill. It was a very special garden. When I, when I arrived, I took this camera, took images of the garden, and I'm really, I'm really happy of what this lens is capable of producing. You get a really wide angle, you got everything in it. Now, you might have seen from the images in Hamburg and maybe some images here of the building that the lines are not always straight. Sometimes the building falls to you, sometimes it falls away from you, sometimes it falls to the side. It's because shooting with a super wide angle, like a 10 millimeter on an APS-C camera, this is an extreme angle. And when I stand in front of a building looking up and I photograph like this. The lines are all over the place and you should be careful when you photograph a building that you photograph it. Here's the building, the wall, and you should hold the camera like this to get the lines all straight. When you put the camera like this or like this, then all the lines are all over the place because the angle that I use. Now, I'm not a technical photographer. I don't shoot technically correct, I shoot emotionally. I want to feel an emotion with the image. I don't care if all the lines are straight. Now I'm, a, now I'm not a technical photographer. To me it's important the emotion. And also 
even with landscape or with architecture photography to me, does the image transport an emotion? Does it touch me emotionally? If yes, it doesn't really matter if the lines are all correct. But I understand for people who are really, for those people who think the technical aspects of the image is very important, that there is no vignette in the corner, that the sharpness is all over the place the same, that the lines are straight, all this, I understand this, I'm not that kind of photographer. So my images often are imperfect on the technical side, but the core is the emotion, which with images with people is the, the emotion in the person. With architecture, it's the colors, it's the composition, it's, it's a feeling and I cannot really describe it, but that's, that's what I'm driven to. So you have to be more careful with this lens when shooting a building, you should stand like this, and not like this. Instead of being right in front of the building, shooting upwards, you should get a little bit further away and have the camera straight. So this is an even uh, position, not like this. The angle should not be extreme. Now I do shoot like this, and therefore the lines are sometimes all over the place. This happens with many super wide angle lenses. It's not just with this one. Okay, this was Tuscany Florence. Let's go over to Madrid again. The core of what I did in Madrid was photographing people on the streets. I had my Canon 6D with the Sigma 35mm 1.4 art lens and the Canon 135mm f2.0 L lens. That was the key, the core of what I did. This was to film me, which is a great way with this lens. We, go, we come to this uh, in, a, in a moment. But then all in between the moments, I took out this camera just to take some snapshots of the buildings, of the scenery, because with my full frame gear, I cannot capture the building from top to bottom. I can get the balcony, I can get the entrance, I can get the sky and the roof, but I cannot get all of this in one frame, but I can with this 10 to 80 millimeter lens. So here are now images from Madrid, and I'm really, really happy with the images, how they look, how easy it was to get them. Um, I'm a really a, a run and gun shooter, so I don't really take much time for one image. None of these images were taken with consideration. All of these images are snapshots because there's, this is not on a job, it's not a paid thing, it's just me walking around with this camera. This is Madrid. So one, one area where I use this camera and lens as a professional, as a job to make money with. This is real estate photography. I make pictures for banks and real estate agencies when they want their, a house or a flat to be photographed. Then they call me, I come and take pictures of the house or the flat if it is for sale. And sometimes also hotels reach out to me. Here I have some images. Again, it's a very old camera. Nobody would buy this right now. There, every camera you can get is better than this. Uh, but the lens is great. It's a great super wide angle lens. It's small, it's light. And here you see images I took with this kit. Sometimes I use a flash. So I put a flash. It doesn't matter which one. Uh, it should have TTL. It's easier like this. Put it to the back, sometimes to the side. And then TTL, take images like this. And so you see some images with flash, some images without it. And I make money with this. This is part of my job. The core is photographing people, but this is a side business, you could say, that gets me jobs regularly without me doing anything. It's always the same banks. It's always the same real estate agencies that reach out to me when they have a new house, a new property to sell. And I still use this old damn camera with this beautiful lens because it's small and light and super wide. Okay, so real estate. Now all you've seen now is city, buildings, a little bit of landscape, still life. Now what if you want to photograph people? You have to be careful when photographing people with the super wide angle lens because there can be a lot of distortion and the proportion can get out of space, you could say. If I take a picture like this, my nose will be very big and my ears will be very narrow. Uh, the perspective will be crazy. 
So you have to be careful when photographing people, but you can do it. So let's take a look at some images that I took with this equipment photographing people. So we did a workshop in Spain where my girlfriend comes from, Anna, and again, I had my big equipment, my full frame camera gear with prime lenses, beautiful images, great portrait. Anna with a dress, 135mm, f2.0, you only see the beautiful woman, nothing else, you don't even know where we are. Boom, great image. And then after all the images are taken, I put out this camera that again I had to film me while I photographed the photo shoot. I took some images with this guy. And it's a really great addition to the telephoto lens where you only got the emotion and the portrait and the person but not much of the background. With this you see a lot of the background. And if you are not too close, you can get really great proportions and really great images. I'm really happy with these images that we got from the workshop um, just as some, some background images, some behind the scenes you could say. And it was a very different perspective than shooting with a 135 or 50 millimeter lens on a full frame camera. So some more portraits. Uh, again with Anna we went into the mountains. Here are some images I took of her with natural light and then same place with the flash. Sometimes I hold the flash like this in my hand at 10 millimeters, it works. Or I put it on a tripod, so I have a tripod or a light stand, put it up here, maybe a softbox, and then you got these images with flash. So you see the two different looks, both are, both are fine. Photography is something very subjective, there is not one answer. You can choose different lenses, different camera systems, with flash, without it, with a reflector, with a couple of flashes, whatever you choose, it is all right as long as you like it. Liking something makes it right. So it doesn't matter with flash, without flash, even super wide angle can be something that you can use for portraiture if you are careful not to get too close. Okay, another photo shoot with a flash. Beauty, I think beautiful images with a nice sun in the background going down with a flash. Again, this old guy with the beautiful 10 to 80 millimeter lens. And, um, and I took some images with natural light in front of the house here in the park and I edited in different ways. So even the old camera, you can edit the images in different styles, dynamic range, it's all okay. And this is what it looks like photographing people with a 10 millimeter to 80 millimeter super wide angle lens. Now what's so great about this, let me round this up, is super light, it's really plastic, light, small, uh, small. Usually super wide angle lenses are large. They are very large in the front. So when you use filters, you sometimes need a different or new filter system just to get a filter on the front. This is super light. It's easy to put a filter on it. Uh, it's handy. It's very cheap, 230 euros. And when you look at other super wide angle lenses like the Fuji 10 to 24 millimeter, it's nearly a thousand. Sony has the 10 to 80 millimeter for 700 euros. So this is a beautiful, I think way to get into super wide angle photography. It's super sharp. It has image stabilization. So if you want to film yourself or you shoot at night, you can do it. So let me end this video with some more images from Malaga, Venice, Paris, and some videos where I film myself like this. Thank you very much. And I hope that you can take some positive aspects from this video to make a buying decision. At this price point, 230 euros new. You can buy it, test it for yourself. Is wide angle for me? Do I like it? Do I actually use it? Do I need it? And if you don't sell it, if you use it, keep it. I really like this lens and I can really recommend it for Canon APS-C, lightweight, small, a perfect companion. Fertig.